so that we got the this uh, amos best society award trophy so i welcome you all for the pg star series organized by nagpur obijo society with government medical college gondia thank you dr rajesh patil friends this is our 20th pg webinar series and we always you know we always want all positive things in our life and when it comes to our profession that only positive and you know, we think about only positive and positive but when a patient is born with some negative things that is rh negative that to it is in pregnancy then what to do so today we will be discussing rh negative pregnancy dr vivek gede ventured to deal with rh negative pregnant lady to make the things positive for her and so we are having two affectionate and academic faculties who will help dr vivek to make all the negative positive things welcome examiners dr sumbha joshi and dr shashi kabra now we know that the ultrasound is one of the important factor to detect and making us alert about the negative activities going on in the uterus so we invited dr josna rani panigra to guide us on ultrasound monitoring of rh negative pregnancy she will be she will enrich us with pulse of wisdom welcome dr josna rani panigra now we are blessed to have two very two more very positive and brilliant facilities to chair this session welcome dr rajesh patil and dr monica singh dr neelam sahani will put us in comfort zone for watching this negative to positive effect by weaving all together all faculties together i must mention the positive faculties of this pg activity dr anuja bhalerao dr bhakti guzar and dr prachi dikshit our secretary dr pragati khatkar you know is always there with us to make all positive things so let's enjoy this yummy thank you uh, uh, our examiners for first session are uh, dr sulubha joshi ma'am she is a director muhs fetal medicine fellowship course umarji hospital pune retired professor and hod obgy nk nkp sims nagpur past president ims nagpur chapter past president i i ptb nagpur chapter bp ni past secretary narchi nagpur instructor also course of aafp uh, run mano marriage and uh, bureau for mentally and physically handicapped Uh, our other uh, examiner is dr uh, sashi al kabra uh, maheshwari madam she is m md fiicog f mas uh, dip mas uh, senior specialist department of obg ddu hospital delhi health services uh, immediate past chairperson pcp ndt committee west district delhi uh, secretary delhi chapter north india gynec forum chairperson safe motherhood committee aogd 2024 26 Uh, I think we can move on, madam. Thank you so yes. much. Uh, now I would like to welcome Dr. Bekere here, SMC Gondia, to present the case of Rh negative pregnancy. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Bekere from GMC Gondia. I am here presenting Rh negative pregnancy case in front of you. Hope I am audible to everyone. Yes. 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 Please go ahead, madam. Thank you, ma'am. My patient was a 30-year-old Hindu housewife, resident of Bantula. Husband was laborer by occupation, Palbi by caste, married since five years of non-consanguineous marriage, and she was gravid two para one live one previous NVD at nine months of amenorrhea and 40 weeks by. Uh, and she visited first time in our hospital, admitted from OPD for safe confinement with Rh negative pregnancy. on admission there was no complaint of bleeding pv or leaking pv no complaint of pain in abdomen no history of epigastric pain headache or blurring of vision no history of trauma to abdomen no history of any diagnostic procedure done patient pursues fetal movement well on menstrual history her lmp was the 4th of march 2023 and by neglect formula her edd was 11th of december 2023 on admission and by scan of 10 weeks she is 40 weeks and period of amenorrhea was 40 weeks she attended her menarche on 13 years of age her uh, regular men menstrual previous menstrual cycle was regular menstrual flow of 28 to 30 days bleeding for 3 to 4 days and 2 to 3 pads of pus per day without passage of any clots or and not associated with the dysmenorrhea <coughs> obstetric history she is gravid 2 para 1 live 
married since five years. On Paramount Live, she had a male child, full term normal vaginal delivery, two point five years of age. Birth weight was two point six kg. He received. There was no history of any uh, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, or blood transfusion. Baby was O positive. NTD received in the antenatal period and the postnatal period. No history of jaundice in baby and no history of blood transfusion in baby. Gravidity was mother's mother proof, doctor. Consumes... What was mother's her, her blood mother, group? Mother, 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 I'm A negative blood group okay. was there, ma'am. Okay, okay. Okay, carry on. Um, uh, history of present pregnancy. In first trimester, patient was diagnosed by urine pregnancy test done at home. Patient was admitted in second month of ANC at private clinic with two months of uh, amenorrhea and with history of spotting parvajanum since one to two days. NTD of 300 microgram was received. On first scan, she, uh, she had done in second month suggestive of single intrauterine fetus of 10 weeks of gestation. Routine blood administration done and blood group was of the patient was found to be A negative. Husband blood group was done, which was O positive. Indirect group test was done, which came negative. Patient has taken folic acid supplementation. No NTNB scan one was done at that time. In second trimester, she received booster dose of NTD, uh, sorry, injection uh, tetanus. Anomaly scan was done at 20th weeks, which came normal. Patient took iron and calcium supplementation regularly. Picnic failed at five months of amenorrhea in her, her ANC period. In third trimester, she visit twice to the clinic. Iron folic acid taken regularly. Growth scan was reported normal with lycra adequate with normal uh, baby weight. Indirect cum test was done at 12th week, repeated at 28th and the 36th of week, which came negative. In past history, there was no history of blood transfusion in the past. There was no history of hypertension, diabetes, TB, or surgery in the past or thalassemia. Family history was not significant. Personal history was normal bowel and bladder habit and sleep and appetite. On general examination, she was moderately built, well nourished, febrile. Pulse was 92 beats per minute, normal volume, and the regular. BP was 110 by 60, MMFG in left arm supine position. Respiratory was, uh, it was found to be 18 per minute. There was no pallor, no ectrus, no sinusitis, no clubbing, no edema, no lymphadenopathy. Tongue was moist, teeth, gum, tonsils were normal. Pre pregnancy BMI was 23 kg per, uh, per meter square. Weight gain, total weight gain in the pregnancy is 10 kg. Breast examination was bilateral base was normal. On systemic examination in cardiovascular system, there was no abnormality detected. In the respiratory system, there was no abnormality was detected. On obstetric examination, for abdominal examination, inspection on inspection, I found abdomen longitudinally ovoid, full term with flank full with healthy skin, umbilicus central and everted. There was no scar, stria gravidum was present, and the linear nigra was present. On palpation, uterus was full term. With full flanks, sympathetic profundal height was 34 centimeters. On, for performing all obstetric grips, my uh, my fetus the fetus was in a longitudinal line with cephalic presentation, head fixed, two feet palpable with fetal fetal back on left side, with fetal weight 2.7 kg with adequate liquor and with no uterine activity at present. On perspicular examination, there was no uh, no bleeding or no leaking PV. Cervix vagina was healthy, no vaginal discharge. On pervaginal uh, per examination, modified bishop score was 4. Her initiation done on admi admission, hemogram was 11 gram HB, 8500 was her WBC count, and 256,000 was her platelets. Blood group was A negative, HIV, HBCG, sickling, and VDRL came negative. Her CM serum TSH was normal 1.8, and her OGCT was normal 98. USD done on 1st of the, uh, December, suggestive of single intrauterine fetus. Written, hello, hello, excuse me. You have yes, written an EDT is December 23. Yes, and sir. You, have, you are mentioning USD date on 1st December 2024. That isn't typing, Mr. Ma'am. Sorry. Okay. It, is, it should be 23, I think. Then. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 23. Okay. It was 23, ma'am. Okay. Uh, single live intrauterine fetus of gestation is 37 plus 4 weeks. Effective fetal weight was 2.5 kg. Placenta was posted and like was adequate. My diagnosis is 30 year old, the other two para one live one with 40 weeks of gestational age with single, single live intrauterine fetus with cephalic presentation with IRS neg negative pregnancy without isomerization for safe confinement. So, what was the EDT of your patient? It's okay, carry on. Hello. Yes, yes, carry on. 
Oh, so it was tenth uh, of uh, December, ma'am. Okay. So you induce and she delivers, right? Sorry, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Carry on, carry on. So on management, patient was induced at forty weeks with dinoprostol gel because yeah. her biceps score was four. Patient delivered non uh, vaginally after twelve hours of induction. Outcome was the female child with birth weight of two point seven kg. Baby was cried immediately after birth. Baby group was blood group was O positive. Mother received anti D within twelve hours of delivery. There was no sign of jaundice seen in the postnatal period of baby. So, yeah. So, so you have mentioned here. Carry on, madam. Yeah. So you have mentioned here isoimmunization. So, Dr. Vivek, please tell me what is the difference between isoimmunization and alloimmunization? Uh, they both are the same terms, man. Previously, it was isoimmunization. Nowadays, it is used as alloimmunization. What actually happens? Uh, actually, in isoimmunization, there is a uh, <coughs> there was anti uh, antibody production against the antigen of the uh, in the individual of the same species from the in response to antigen of the uh, individual in the same species. No, no, it is with respect to what the antigen which is not present in that individual. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am, you can ask. Dr. Hema, your, your case was very, very uncomplicated. Patient came to you right from beginning? No, ma'am. Actually, uh, my patient was a boot case at PSC, ma'am. She came first time at my hospital uh, for the safe confinement on the 40th week as the PSC, a uh, doctor on the PSC referred her to the higher center, ma'am. Okay. So, but this patient was aware that she is RH negative? Yes, ma'am. She was uh, aware about uh, her uh, RH negative status, ma'am. RH status? Said, yes, ma'am. And so, what is the protocol? What is normal protocol in a RH negative pregnancy if the patient is pregnant for the first time? Ma'am, when patient is pregnant for the first time and she visited uh, to the in healthcare facility on the first time, we need to, uh, if she doesn't know her uh, blood group, then we need to uh, do her ABO blood group and the RH typing. If she comes negative, then at that time we need to also do the blood grouping of the, her husband to know whether her uh, husband's blood group positive or negative. Right after yes, that, the first thing is you have to do the husband. blood group of husband. That's if husband, husband is, is negative, then then uh, we need to carry the, this pregnancy as normal ANC now. There is no, no need to inter intervene uh, by any means. Yeah, if husband perfect. is positive then? If husband is positive ma'am, then we need to do ICT. If ICT comes positive ma'am, if ICT comes negative, then we need to uh, do ICT on the uh, 20th week Suppose and the 30th. Can a patient who is pregnant for the first time have positive ICT? Is there a possibility? Yes, ma'am. In which cases? Uh, if, uh, uh, if there is a uh, th ma'am, there is a grandmother theory. Uh, by no, 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 there no. Is no, 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 okay. no, no. Well, grandmother theory is one thing, <laughs> one aspect. There are the other possibilities. More common reason, other possibilities. Oh, it's very, very rare. We have not seen. Yeah, yeah it is it's very, very rare. theoretical. Sensitization also yeah, occurs exactly. in the early pregnancy, ma'am. No, no. If there is any history of she is pregnant for the first time and coming to you for yes, the first visit, you found that I, I, this ICT is positive. What is the possibility? Is there any other possibility? Ma'am, uh, there might be history of blood transfusion, ma'am. Yes. That is one thing. Second, any other possibility? Uh, she might had history of abortion, previous abortions, ma'am. Hmm. Which may which might have gone unrecognized. Which might have been missed. It could be chemical pregnancy also. So, so there was a, the, her mother's blood group was A negative and husband's O positive. So is there any relation of ABO incompatibility with the degree of isoimmunization? Yes, ma'am. If uh, ABO uh, blood uh, is uh, I mean incompatibility was there, then there is less chances of the uh, affection, ma'am. There is only two percent chances that. Uh, in ABO incompat incompatibility, affection is very less. Because ma'am, uh, antibody this? present against the uh, 
anti antibody present in the mother's blood group will destroy the and uh, very early the if the fetal red cells will transfuse to the mother's uh, body map and yeah, then th this... that lead to the destruction of the whole rbc which are in the blood group and that leads to the again uh, the rh uh, positive antigen will also destroy then there so there will be no uh, antigenic response to the uh, in the patient now So can Sometimes you tell me we get many patients. We get patients for hysterectomy. We used to get the number of patients for hysterectomy. Patient used to be five, six para. And at the time, patient uh, at the time of hysterectomy, when we used to do her blood grouping, it used to turn out as negative. That means, and all other previous pregnancies used to be normal with normal outcome. So how can you explain this? Ma'am, uh, in this case, ma'am, uh, husband blood group might be a uh, negative blood group. Okay. Yes. yes. Or uh, patient mu must be a non-responder to the antigen, RH antigen. There are thirty percent chances that a patient might be uh, a non-responder to the uh, RH antigen. Mm -hmm. And there, there are again chances of the uh, fetal uh, this fetal hemorrhage. Yes. So, Dr. Vivek, you have done ICT of the patient at 20 weeks and ICT is negative. So, what will you do further? Suppose it is a primary gravida. Ma'am, I will do again repeat uh, ICT on the 20th week of the uh, gestation. And then I will uh, give immunoprophylaxis, antenatal you know, immunoprophylaxis to the patient. When? And again, I will repeat uh, ICT at the uh, 36 weeks of gestation, ma'am. So what is the time of what is the time of giving antibody prophylaxis? What we? Uh, sorry, ma'am. When will you give the antibody prophylaxis in antenatal period? Not thirty six weeks. What is the standard guideline of Foxy and uh, uh, ACOG guideline? Ma'am, uh, I will uh, administer antibody pro prophylaxis twenty eight weeks. Single dose, 300 micrograms. Yes, if it is negative, I will repeat ICT every four weeks. And if it is okay. negative at 28 weeks, then I will give uh, NTD gamma globulin, right? This should yes, be the answer. Okay. Why 28 weeks? Why this particular figure 28 weeks? Why not at uh, 34 weeks, 36 weeks, 20 weeks? Because fetomaternal hemorrhage less, continues throughout pregnancy, isn't it? There are less chances of fetomaternal hemorrhage uh, less in uh, before the 28 weeks of gestation, ma'am. And the NTD uh, is effective till the uh, 12 weeks, ma'am. So the if we we give, we give uh, anti anti immunoglobin at 28 weeks, that will cover till the 40th week of the session. That uh, will uh, cover any fetal hemorrhage after in between. One query: Your patient had uh, bleeding in first trimester and she had received NTD, isn't it? Suppose yes, this patient bleeds again after 15 days, will you give another NTD? No, ma'am. If she bleeds after three uh, three weeks, then I, I will repeat the uh, dose. But if uh, if uh, she bleeds before three weeks, uh, there is no need to uh, give NTD, ma'am. As the three weeks uh, or six weeks, ma'am. I actually uh, three weeks. Uh, Foxy government guidelines says, ma'am, three weeks. Because median half life of uh, median median uh, median half life of NTD is the uh, trend. Uh, 26 days, ma'am, that will uh, cover the 21 days or uh, approximately. The Foxy guideline says that... continues to have bleeding off and on. Then, how frequently... Is there any method of calculating fetal maternal hemorrhage? Yes, ma'am, there are two methods. Uh, there are two types of methods, ma'am, quantitative and the qualitative. Uh, qual in qualitative methods, uh, we have Roser test, where uh, it if it came negative, that means she had a uh, fetal maternal hemorrhage of 2 ml. We will give 1300 microgram of NTD to the patient. But if result test came positive, that means she had a uh, fetal hemorrhage of more than 2 ml. Then we will go for the uh, KB test, clean or bed K test, which is the acid dilution test, ma'am, where we can calculate the uh, amount of fetal hemorrhage, which is based on the principle of acid dilution, uh, ma'am, which is uh, acid uh, in KB test, ma'am. It is a, uh, uh, there are uh, some uh, cases like in sickle cell and thalassemia. There are uh, slight, uh, uh, what I will say, the precision is less. In that case, we'll go for the flow cytometry, ma'am. So, you, uh, how much amount, 300 microgram, uh, this dose, this standard dose, how much amount of uh, fetal RBC or blood does it take care now, of? 300 microgram will cover the 30 ml of the whole blood 
or that means 50 ml of the rvc is maximum yes so if the fetal maternal hemorrhage is more than that then you may repeat the ntd gamma ma'am uh, ma uh, for the uh, fetal maternal hemorrhage more than 30 ml of blood for every ml of blood we will add 10 microgram to the uh, uh, dose ma'am there are only uh, 0.3% chances that uh, there will be more in uh, fetal maternal hemorrhage more than 30 ml so what is the critical titer of ict uh it is uh, it is used to be 1 is to uh, 16 but uh, it differs uh, it depends uh, there are differences in the different laboratory which uh, uh, we we assume that it is 1 is to 8 to 1 is to 32 is the critical titer for the uh, as attraction on the baby so in a particular lab the critical titer is 1 is to 16 and your patient is showing 1 is to 16 titer so now how will you what will you do next Ma'am, uh, if uh, critical titer is one is to sixteen, then uh, if patient is first time affected, then I will repeat. Uh, I will go for the MCA Doppler, MCA PSV Doppler, ma'am, fr from sixteen weeks of gestation. If uh, Mina, if her uh, MCA PSV from sixteen from... weeks, why from for sixteen? What was Madam's question? Ma'am, uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, it is uh, if if uh, uh, critical titer came one is to sixteen, then what you will proceed? Yeah, so then if I will it, do it the... comes at say thirty weeks. Then why do you want to go back to sixteen weeks? <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Actually, mm -hmm. whenever it no comes to, ah yes, ma'am. There is no need. If as it soon is, as uh, you okay. detect that it has reached critical level, then you will go for MCPSV Doppler, ma'am. MCPSV. Yes. Uh, if yes. Uh, if MCPSV Doppler, there is if uh, we need to monitor for the for every week, ma'am. If the uh, uh, MCPSV Doppler Came one point five multiple of median. Then we need to go for the quadruple synthesis to know the hematocrit of the patient. If hematocrit of the uh, baby came less than thirty grams, what actually happens in the middle cerebral artery because of RH negative status? Ma'am, uh, increased velocity. Uh, there is there is uh, increased velocity of the uh, blood, ma'am, as the cardiac output is increased due to the uh, uh, anemia. And the resistance uh, is also uh, less. So in CA PB PSV goes on increasing. If yes, it is, if it remains one point one point two, one point one one point two, then what will you do? Ma'am, we will monitor again for uh, weekly weekly uh, MC MS MC PSV will uh, do ma'am. We'll do MC PSV till uh, there is increase uh, in the titer or increase increase in the trend. And if it does not rise, and we will continue pregnancy till the term, ma'am. Till term, okay. And supposing if it goes above one point four, it uh, touches one point five, then, ma'am. Uh, then we need to do power synthesis, ma'am. Ma'am, if patient is thirty eight weeks and it is one point five, what will you do, ma'am? Uh, we will, uh, ma'am. We will uh, do uh, again. We will go uh, do MCPSV for it one is, to two it days. Has Huh? Uh, why why do you want to extend ma'am is saying the patient has reached the maturity patient, then patient we can terminate baby ma'am patient is 38 weeks according to ma'am we can we can terminate baby ma'am we should terminate the pregnancy because yes ma'am baby will be more safe more, outside uh, more safe the uterus, and the baby will be at the uh, yes ma'am we can avoid her from the excess uh, exposure to fetal maternal hemorrhage ma'am any precaution should be taken during labor Ma'am, in the first stage of labor, we should avoid the. Will you allow vaginal delivery? Yes, ma'am. Will you allow vaginal delivery? Yes, ma'am. If patient is less than thirty-two week and uh, there is a more severe uh, uh, affection. Yeah, we are talking about this patient, thirty-eight weeks. Yes, ma'am. So, ma'am, I will do the normal vaginal delivery. So, how will you? She will need induction, na? Yes, ma'am. How will I you induce? Ma'am, by cerebral gel, dinoprostol gel. So if the if the biceps core is poor, then I will go for the priming of the cervix by dinoprostol gel. And if the cervix is favorable, biceps is more than seven, then I will go for the uh, uh, amniotomy and the uh, oxytocin, ma'am. Why not uh, separation of membranes? Ma'am, separation of membrane will uh, increase the chances of fetal maternal hemorrhage, ma'am. So how will you manage the labor? Any special will precautions will you take during delivery? Uh, in first stage of first level, stage, will... second stage, third stage. Yeah, systematically stage, you just yes, keep on telling us. In uh, first stage of labor, I will avoid giving the argumentation to the patient, ma'am. 
we never give ergometry in first we never give ergometry in first test yes ma'am yes ma'am we will uh, never give ma'am in fact we do not give uh, ergometry yes. even for the prophylaxis of postpartum hemorrhage we give oxytocin in first stage of labor i will monitor uh, electro i will do continuous electrolyte monitoring of the uh, baby in the okay. second stage of labor no uh, do you give fundal pressure routinely no ma'am should it be given no ma'am it might no, so don't are it negative it should never be given no yes, massaging no fundal pressure no massaging no, as, such, no as such fundal pressure should never be given in any never be given irrespective of the rh negative status it should not be given it comes yes. under the don'ts yes never yes ma'am so in second stage what precautions will in you take second stage in second stage ma'am uh, i will uh, cut clamp uh, immediately after birth and uh, i will uh, keep the cord as long as possible and the on short on the placental side i will collect cord blood from the maternal side and i will not do not i will not clamp the placental uh, cord i will allow the blood to uh, fall out from the placenta and i will allow to cross placenta uh, get expelled spontaneously डिलीवरी Yes, ma'am. There is uh, increased chances of uh, more chances of the fetal maternal hemorrhage, as the uh, incision site is there, and the uh, placenta will uh, expel, and the uh, the blood from the placenta will expel expel in the uh, peritoneal cavity. That will A precaution should be taken. Ma'am, proper mopping should be done. Proper mopping. mopping should, mops should be kept on the site that uh, it will decrease the spillage of blood in the peritoneal cavity, and the proper cleaning of the peritoneal cavity should be done as far as possible. as much of blood in spilled in the peritoneal cavity we need to uh, remove it and the we will uh, avoid the manual uh, removal of the placenta yes would you like to take any blood sample of the newborn baby yes ma'am i will collect blood blood from the cord for the uh, uh, direct uh, direct combs test for blood grouping of baby for hematocrit of the baby and for the bilirubin of the baby uh, in the baby and the uh reticulocyte count in baby ma'am in how many percentage of cases test is positive if direct combs test is positive what will you do if the direct combs test is positive ma'am uh, that it means that that uh, already elimination happened ma'am then uh, there is there, there is no need to give uh, and post postpartum uh, Entity prophylaxis, and we will monitor the baby for any changes in uh, like jaundice or any other symptoms. Now, so baby will so be handed over to neonatologist. Neonatologist. Even hemoglobin is very important in that case, na? That whether it is decreasing, increasing patient developing baby developing jaundice, so they need that specialist care. You so suppose. suppose the case has h mole right so h mole does not have any fetal tissue so after suction vacation would you like to administer nt or not ma'am yes ma'am i will uh, administer the uh, nt d according to acg I... guideline because ma'am uh, in complete mole there is uh, no organogenesis but uh, the diagnosis of the complete whether it is a complete mole or the partial mole is depend on the histopathology which will immediately not available so it is better to administer the ntd to the patient yeah good thank you ma'am suppose the of... patient is giving history of affection of previous baby baby had hydrops or and she also had iud so how will you manage the patient if patient comes to you in first trimester ma'am uh, if patient comes to uh, in first trimester yes bad obstetric history no live issue uh if patient comes with a previous affection of baby then there is no need to do antibody titers ma'am we will directly uh, go for the monitoring by mca psd doctor from the 16 weeks ma'am and again okay. the management from 16 weeks 
Okay. Ma'am, uh, again, the management will be same. Uh, we will monitor uh, MCPSV for uh, every two weeks, one to two weeks. If uh, it is uh, more than one to 1.5 multiple of median, then we will go for the quarter synthesis. And it came less than hematocrit, it came less than 30. We will go for the intrauterine transmission. And if quarter synthesis uh, in the hematocrit, if the hematocrit is more than 30, then we will uh, again monitor uh, with MCA PSV with quarter synthesis uh, week in every week, ma'am. Can you tell us something about intrauterine transfusion? When is it done? How is it done? Ma'am, intrauterine trans transfusion done in the three ways, ma'am, uh, ideally. It is interperitoneal. Indications intra for intrauterine transfusion? Ma'am, if hematrocyt is came less than 30, uh, less than 30 percent, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, and the fetal hydro will occur if less than hematocrit is less than fifteen percent. So we need to give the intrauterine transfusion in. Uh, so usually are, when, are, when MCA PSV is more than one point five, mostly the hematocrit is less than thirty. Thirty. Yes. You are not going to do hematocrit once, and then again you are going not going to do the invasive procedure, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. So it is done in the same sitting. Same sitting. It is done in the same sitting. Results are available within the. Within few minutes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Quadrant is then uh, in the institute where the facility of the uh, transfusion is available. Hmm. So, uh, in the same sitting, we will uh, do the intrauterine transmission. Uh, transfusion. There are three types of the intrauterine transmission, like intra uh, intravascular, intraperitoneal, and the combined. In the intra uh, intravascular uh, transfusion. For that, you tell me about the blood, the transfusion which you are going to give. What instructions yeah, will be given to the uh, blood bank officer? Ma'am, uh, we will transfuse uh, O negative blood group, ma'am, with uh, freshly uh, O negative blood group freshly uh, transfused, cross match with the ma maternal uh, ma maternal plasma, and the uh, and the according to ACOG recent ACOG guideline, uh, that blood should be uh, K negative, ma'am, K antibody negative. It should be irradiated or Can you just it because is, you is, have now told be... about K K L. <laughs> What is the significance of KL antibodies? Or what is... Ma'am, uh, ma if KL antibodies present in... Uh, uh, it, if KL present in a uh, chem positive, ma'am, then uh, the KL anti antigen directly attacks on the erythroblast cells, ma'am. So there will be anemia directly without hemolysis, ma'am. So, so there, there is a need of this MCA PSP. Here there will be no jaundice. But yes, there will be no jaundice. There is no hemolysis. There will be no jaundice, ma'am. So, Vivek, so uh, we are be, heading... This is scale negative. And? And, and uh, ma'am, hematocrit must be 70 to 80 percent, ma'am. Yeah. And the, uh, plus, uh, the blood should be irradiated for the uh, avoiding the um, phyto, uh, post versus gra graft versus post reaction, ma'am. So, we need to eradicate the blood, ma'am. Okay. How much amount of iutrin? How much blood will be given? Ma'am, uh, that is uh, uh, calculated from the formula. That is, uh, is uh, see, the formula is the hematocrit, uh, the initial hematocrit, uh, just as ma'am, hematocrit of the baby minus uh, initial hematocrit upon uh, hematocrit of the transfuse uh, blood, tra blood to be transfused, ma'am. Okay, there are two different formulas. So you have calculated the amount to be given. Yes, so another formula given? gestational age minus 20 into 10. Hmm. So how is this transfusion given? Ma'am, uh, in intravascular transfusion, uh, we will, uh, under under sonographic guidance, we will uh, transfuse to the, in the umbilical vein. Uh, the transfusion rate will be 1 to 2 ml per minute. And uh, uh, as the transfusion is completed, we need to again uh, flush that needle with normal saline and the aspirate the uh, again aspirate from uh, same uh, needle and the 0.5 ml of the first aspirate should be discarded and the again the uh, the next blood will be uh, calculated for the hematocrit of the uh, blood of fetus so that we will uh, check the uh, how much blood uh, hematocrit is increased in the blood so vivek what is amnestic response uh, amnestic response is the uh, develop uh, development of antibodies uh, in the subsequent exposure, madam. 
when mother had developed antibodies and now she is carrying a negative fetus, even then that response will be exaggerated. That is called amnestic response. And what is the meaning of sensibilized? Ma'am, in sensibilized, ma'am, patient, uh, uh, mother is exposed to the RS positive uh, uh, blood or uh, RBCs of the baby, but the antibodies are not developed. It's called sensibilization, ma'am. So in the next pregnancy, they show their effect. Yes, ma'am. And can you tell us that grandmother effect which you were telling me, telling us earlier? In grandmother theory, ma'am, uh, the mother, if the mother is uh, uh, RS negative and she had mother who is RS positive, so, so there are chances that uh, in that pregnancy, uh, there are chances that fetal maternal hemorrhage might be occur that made uh, production of antibody in this current pregnancy mother. So she is already immunized and she can affect the baby in utero. And suppose in the first in, in the first pregnancy, ma'am. Yeah. So suppose you are planning external cephalic version in a breech patient. So so would you like to protect the entity? Yes, ma'am. He was not successful even. Yes, ma'am. Even uh, there, there are risk of uh, fetal maternal hemorrhage, ma'am. So we will yeah. administer the entity. There are yeah. more uh, and uh, in the external cephalic version, there are more chances and the large amount of the. Uh, fetal hemorrhage can occur. Then uh, we need to administer the NTD and we might need to uh, calculate the fetal hemorrhage uh, quantification of the fetal hemorrhage. Yes. That additional so, NTD can be required in the uh, external cephalic version. Cystic uh, complications associated with RH isoimmunization. Uh, there is a mirror syndrome. Uh, there might be preeclampsia. Yes, preeclampsia is common. Then yes, large placenta. Large so placenta. why does preeclampsia occur in our uh, negative pregnancy? There is a placentomegaly, ma'am. There is increased resistance in the yes, blood. Any placenta. placentomegaly may lead to preeclampsia because the disease is in the trophoblastic villi. Yes, ma'am. Supposing patient is at a place where the facility of intrauterine transfusion is not available. Patient has reached 32 weeks, 32-33 weeks. In CAPSV is also more than 1.5. Then what will you do? Ma'am, uh, well, then we need to do uh, give, give the corticosteroid coverage and we need to deliver the baby now. Either do that or transfer the patient to a higher center. Higher center, ma'am. Isn't it? Is there any role of then? immunoglobulins therapy? Sorry, ma'am. Any role of immunoglobulin therapy? New research. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in patient, if patient is a RH negative and the husband is homo, uh, homozygous, and there are chances of affection of the fetus, so we can uh, give IV antibody uh, uh, immunoglobulin to mother at the uh, rate of the one one milligram per kg baby weight before twelve weeks of gestation, ma'am. 20 weeks. Two researchers okay. come. Sorry, ma'am. With immunoglobin, we can sometimes delay the transfusion. Suppose we do not have that time and we do not have uh, blood transfusion facility in our own center. So we can delay this by three weeks by giving immunoglobulin. This yes, is just a new research. Yeah. Suppose husband is homozygous and patient is desperate to have pregnancy. What are the other options? Then uh, they, if <laughs> husband is homozygous and the patient is wanting uh, uh, to conceive and there is bad, bad object history, then uh, they should uh, go for the donor's in, uh, artificial insemination by do donor of the RH negative, uh, uh, RH negative donor, madam. If they want their own child, ma'am. Uh, if the patient husband is homozygous, there are chances. Uh, there are hundred percent chances that. Next baby will the RH positive mom. If patient's husband okay. is heterozygous, then we need to. No, no, I am talking about homozygous only. She can think of surrogacy, na? No? Yes, ma'am. She can think of surrogacy. And if the husband is heterozygous, then. Then uh, the... we need to uh, pick the uh, RH. Uh, we need to do the 
blood grouping of the fetus uh, while uh, we need to transfer the rh negative uh, uh, fetus in the uh, art center Okay. What is the role of the Can you elaborate on the RH antibody? What What are the different types of NTD gamma globulin available? NTD gamma globulin available. How they are prepared? How they are given? Uh, Ma'am, uh, NTD gamma globulin are prepared in the by the two methods. That is the fractionation and the uh, flow uh, cytometry. Ma'am, the while for uh, from fractionation. We will uh, go, go by the uh, Owens alcohol. We will do uh, serial fractionation, and this fractionated, fractionated antibody uh, will use for the only IM use. The names are uh, portobil, uh, portobilin and the gamma D. Uh, are those uh, are two uh, two of those are the uh, came from the fractionation of the uh, uh, fractionation from the plasma and the from the cyto cyto uh, cytometry, madam. Uh, there are uh, uh, production of the gamma NTD by ion exchange uh, method. Um, by ion exchange method, um, there are two uh, two uh, NTD are available, available in market. From the cation ion exchange, there is a uh, prophylic NTD is available. And by anion exchange, there is a available Winro. Winro is uh, in UK, ma'am, according to ACOG guideline, it is used for the uh, immune thrombocytic purpura, ma'am. So it is not marketed right now in the India as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And this and the flow cytometric uh, cytometric derivation of the antibody are used for the IV preparations. So the uh, rofilac can be used for the IV administration, madam. You just tell me which cannot be given intravenous, ma'am. Uh, that is very important to know. Fractionation, uh, which came from the fractionation, yes, because it contains protein. Protein and alcohol. So it cannot be given intravenous. Where is NTD given? In the deltoid muscle, ma'am. Why not in gluteal? In uh, gluteal, there are chances of absorption in the subcutical tissue. There will be uh, less absorption and the, uh, there, is, there may be the uh, less dose will be uh, go to the uh, body of mother. You can also give an endonatural thigh also. Yes, ma'am. Uh, quadricep muscle, we also can give in the quadricep muscle. Uh, what is the limitation of MCA PSV? I forgot to ask you this. Ma'am, MCA PSV is not effective after 35 weeks of gestation, madam. Okay. As the re resistance. Before uh, 35 weeks, also, what is the limitation? There is one important parameter. That's why we cannot use this at after 35 weeks. PI, because uh, something PI increases with this. PI of the uh, umbilical uh, different veins now. And the mean increases with gestational age also. So after 35 weeks, it is not much helpful. What about after a IUT, intrauterine transfusion? Uh, after intrauterine transfusion, madam, uh, we need to repeat uh, uh, after two weeks. Again, we need to do the uh, hematocrit of baby. As uh, there is rate of decrease uh, in uh, hematocrit one gram hey, one percent per day. Is the sensitivity same before intrauterine transfusion and after intrauterine transfusion? No, madam. It decreases it because now the fetal RBCs are replaced by replaced. adult RBCs. Adult RBCs, madam. Isn't it? So the hemodynamics yes. change. It's not that so, reliable, but still we have to rely on it because we have no other. No, option. No. So, Vivek, if the fetus is affected by isoimmunization, what is the sequence of changes which may occur in the fetus? Ma'am, uh, when baby is affected by isoimmunization, there will be increased destruction of the RBCs by spleen. So, uh, spleen will be enlarged and the increased load of the uh, production of RBC will increase. That will lead to increase in size of liver. That will lead to uh, hepatosplenomegaly and the enlarged Abdominal circumference. No, but first, the there next... will be mild to moderate anemia. Yes, ma'am. Right now, then hepatosplenomegaly. After that, if it's still not there treated, will, there will be ascites, collection of fluid in the peritoneal and the uh, pericardial and the uh, intraoral cavity. What is that then condition called? Be... Sorry, ma'am. What is that condition called? Hydrops, ma'am. 
yes fetal hydrops collection in more than two cavities it is called hydrops there will be when there is, when there is significant hemorrhage there is one particular clinical finding through which we can pick up significant hemorrhage that is buddha sign ma'am no that's ultrasound finding any uh, yes, clinical on, finding clinical finding follow signs ma'am decreased fetal movement if the patient decreased. is complaining of significant decreased fetal movement we may uh, we may think we we have to rule out significant fetal maternal hemorrhage and then when kidney cells develop if already high drops has developed then how will you manage if already high drops is developed uh, then uh, we need to uh, give intrauterine transfusion ma'am if uh, if hydro development uh, means she is a uh, baby is severely affected with a severe anemia so we need to uh, give the intrauterine transfusion and after one to two setting of the intrauterine transfusion hydrox will be revert back and the placenta megaly is the last uh, uh, symptom some symptom to uh, reverse how is the prognosis ma'am prognosis is poor uh, baby might land up into the uh, uh, post uh, in postnatal period it uh, baby may, might land up in the jaundice or uterus and baby uh, might no, die long term effects so, sorry ma'am long term effect also Ma'am, in long term effect, if a baby had this sort of intrauterine transfusion, there is a sensory sensory neural hearing loss, and the, there is a cerebral palsy in the baby. Yeah. Yes. You answered all the questions so well, well prepared. Yes. Thank you. You were very well prepared. Very well really prepared. I really, really, really. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Great performance. Thank you so much, ma'am. I think we have in the we have uh, covered all the aspects, isn't it, ma'am? Almost all the aspects. Yes, almost. yes, ma'am. Almost all the aspect. It was a pleasure moderating with you. Thank Chair you so much, ma'am. Chairpersons, will you like to add? Yeah. Uh, I would just like to add that Dr. Vivek, you did a great job, and uh, the examiners. I mean, uh, I was uh, uh, remembering my PG days, uh, Shashi, madam, and. Uh, Sulba, ma'am, you were so uh, means you were so meticulous and particular about asking everything. You took out all the knowledge and all the information from the candidate. Nothing was left to imagination. So when he is uh, really practicing, he will be remembering every little thing when he sees the Irish negative, uh, you know, gravida. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's it was a very big learning experience for me. Also, I revised so many things thanks to Dr. Sushma and Dr. Pragati. And it's a pleasure to be listening to this uh, exam. Really, it was very nice discussion. Thanks to chairpersons and also Dr. Vivek presented thank very you. nicely. Very nice. Mama, it was uh, Subha, possible. Thank you very much for coming. Mama, it was all possible due to uh, well guidance from my HOD, Madam Dr. Patil, Madam, and my mentor, Dr. Nilam, Ma'am. So yeah. they keep kept me hammering to prepare well. Yeah, so you are lucky, you are lucky to have them with us. <laughs> so how far is Gondia from Nagpur? It's ma'am like uh, one one fifty kilometers ma'am two hours by train. Uh, three hours. It's a three hours distance. I see. I see. I see. No, this. Rajeshree, this is the way one should get the students prepared for uh, case presentation. I'm I really, really appreciate. Happy. I really appreciate. Give our compliments to your teachers. Doctor Rajeshree is staying there also, constantly guiding. And really always with us for all PG webinars. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, really Thank for, you so uh, much, ma'am, for this opportunity, for giving me this opportunity as a chairperson and for giving the opportunity to my institute to present this case. Yeah, it's our and, uh, pleasure and also. My students have been taking a lot of efforts in spite of alternate day duties. They have been working on it continuously. Yeah. I, I, feel proud of it. I had one query from the examiners. Madam, you put in uh, uh, queries about external kephalic version and fundal pressure, of course, in uh, institutions still it is being given. Even in private sector, it is being given. But like external kephalic version, does the generation of today knows, knows about it? Have they ever seen it being done or do are they aware it is being done or it is only no, from... It is, it is decreasing. It is decreasing, but still... Yeah. Especially in transfer slide, uh, in medical colleges, it is being shown. But they should be aware of the term. Yes. And they, they should, should know what actually it is. 
because I mean, Pragati will also agree. We have done internal podalic yeah. version in the transfers, yes, second transfers yeah. of twins. Yeah, yeah. So that's, the only yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. only indication. Yeah, yeah. That's the only indication of internal but, podalic version. But madam, with the liberal use of cesarean section nowadays, I really think that we were having a webinar on instrumental deliveries in the past. There is any, there's nothing which the postgraduates have seen now what we did in 80s, 90s and you must have seen yes, in yes. 70s, madam. In fact, our postgraduates post are not getting adequate training on vaginal breeze delivery. Yes, ma'am. And in second gravida, whose pelvis is normal and fetus is not extended, all the criteria are met. We must tell them how to take a vaginal delivery also. Because the incidence of cesarean during our time, it was 20%. Now it is crossing 50%. Already it has crossed 50%. Yes. So that art must be learned. Actually, we do have art needs to be reversed back in certain cases. Yeah. Uh, I will like to thank Anojias for giving me opportunity to perform here and uh, uh, give chance to uh, uh, express in front of you. And I, I will love to also thank to my fellow resident and junior resident who are junior to me, allowed me to uh, study well. Give, thank give you. my compliments to your teachers. They have prepared you very yes, nicely. Yes. <laughs> Excellent preparation. So, all, all the best. best all the best. Better. We're already done. Mm -hmm. Vivek, all the best. Thank you, all, done. all the best. So at this moment, I just wanted to inform that this coming Sunday, that is on 25th of February, we, Nagpur OBGY is organizing one uh, live operative workshop, laparoscopic live operative workshop, right. especially from Gondia. All the PGs who want to come, it's going to be a very mega workshop. Dr. Rashi, if yeah, it possible, you. please send the PGs. And your PGs also send hardly all... 1,000 is the this amount. This is is there. Is only 1,000. So they will get because many good faculties from all over India. India. They are coming. Yes. And there will be very good teaching also. Practical workshop. We will love to come there now. Please. Very nice discussion. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm thankful to Before we close, I would like to congratulate Dr. Sushma and Pragati. Her taste, congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. To you and your team. Ma'am, your blessings are always with us since the beginning. Congratulations from my side also to all the organizers. Thank you. And uh, thank you for inviting me here. It's 8 o'clock. A sincere thanks to Dr. Shashi also for being a very good co examiner. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we, both, we have met for the job. first time, but we coordinated very, well, Dr. Silava. Nay, but both the examiners really did the job very well. Yes, the range of questions you have been putting and uh, the way but, they were but, being examined was really wonderful. Wide range. Ma'am, I'm very, very excited to share sharing sharing and we'll have one photograph, photograph together. Me. Can you please stop sharing, Vivek? We'll have one yes. photograph, group photograph. All faculties okay. are here. Okay, okay. Otherwise, yes, Jefferson will just leave yeah, the I, platform. Even, that's why. Uh, yeah, we'll have Ruchi. Yes, ma'am. Like Dr. Josna, please, uh, please be seen. Please open your video. Dr. Josna, Dr. Josna, right from Katak. Hello, Dr. Josna. Here. Welcome, Dr. Josna. Vivek and Neelam, are you seen in the screen properly together? Picture. Mm -hmm. The light is not proper on your face. It is, uh, you now can see that. the, now yeah. it's okay. It's now okay it's... now. Please just, Ruchi, please have one more photograph. Unmute yourself, Josna. One second, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jotsna was not there. One second. Huh? I am there. One second. Uh, one second. I am putting the other pictures first. I have also taken screenshot. I will forward to Pragati. Thank you. Thank you. Monica is very instant in doing all the work. <laughs> okay. So, I think really, I should convey my thanks to today's examiner, Dr. Shashi Kabra and Dr. Silva Joshi Manam, for examin examining this uh, so interesting case presented by Dr. Vivek. Thank you so much. And uh, because by the time I will be giving vote of thanks, maybe somehow, uh, you know, unla unlaunched from the webinar. Actually, uh, sorry, because we are having drama practice. Yeah. We are planning drama on 10th of this March. 
so we both are acting there me and pragati so we had to leave around uh, quarter to 9 so that's <laughs> please <laughs> And Excuse actually, the us. drama is you know scripted <coughs> by our president, madam. Only <laughs> it is on male pregnancy. <laughs> we have listened like to Sushma, topic. Sushma, madam. We listened in the hysteroscopy carnival. She is a you know she is a very artistic surgeon. Yeah, she is very creative. <laughs> so this <laughs> drama is on male pregnancy. So it is on tenth March. I again invite you all to see this drama. All of our Nagpur stars are working. If, and it's scripted if, by. If it is possible, please, Gandhi, uh, please be there, and other also faculty. Nagpur rocks with energy, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Picture yeah. done. Then, let us move ahead. Yes, yes. Come on, we can go ahead now. Go ahead with the talk. Nice talk. Uh, now we will proceed. Now we like to proceed to our next session that is pearls of wisdom uh, with the topic of ultrasound monitoring of Rh negative pregnancy. Uh, and I would like to welcome our chairperson. Uh, Dr. Rajeshri Patil, Madam, our dearest. Let me change the uh, Madam is MBBS, uh, MD, OBGY, attended various conferences at national and state level, moderator in panel discussion in conferences, attended various CMEs and workshops, publications. Madam has international seven publications and national one publication, peer reviewer for OBGY journals, participated for study on international. National survey and practice variations in management of third stage of labor uh, for global network of perinatal and reproductive health 2002 in relation of WHO. WHO uh, participated in IVF ET workshop in Fertility Research Center matters, uh, attended refresher course 2003, medical education technology 2006, good clinical practices and biomedical research workshop 2014, regulatory updates and clinical trials 2015, organized personality and skill development, stress re uh, release and meditation workshops for undergraduate students and faculties in 2009, 2012, 2019 and 2020. Next chapter. For the uh, session is Dr. Modi, Monica Singh. Ma'am has uh, been awarded with 10 gold medals, uh, MBBS professor at Ellen Medical College, uh, Bhopal, consultant reproductive medicine, endoscopist, sonologist, Bhopal Fertility and Endoscopy Center, Bhopal, uh, secretary, M uh, MP chapter, ISAR 2023-24. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I think that's enough. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, our speaker for today is... Dr. Joshna Rani Panikin. It's fine. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Please, please. You are audible. You are audible, but was voice is breaking in between? Voice is breaking? Some vibration, but just he's gone talking. So, should I share my screen? Yes, sure. Is it visible? Ah, uh, yeah, we can see. You can see. So, I will go to the first. Uh, uh, you have to answer. Introduce me. Who, who is sharing? I think. Uh -huh. I am sharing my screen. No, no, somebody. No, I think uh, this is uh, uh, Neelam, a Neelam. person is sharing. Neelam, please stop sharing your screen. Dr. Neelam, yes. Now your screen will be. Yes, you are now yes. visible. Screen is visible. Full screen is visible? No, not a full screen. Your screen is coming off a whole, uh, you know. Uh, you can you have to go to on the slide. Yeah, one. yeah yes. now. Yes. Now it is coming. But no, I am not able to see it. Uh -huh. Just one minute, please. Just wait. Just wait. Let me. Uh, next know. screen. Do next screen. Huh? One. Uh. Uh. Do one thing. Stop. Uh, uh, stop sharing and uh, reshare again. Reshare. Stop share. Then reshare. Stop share. Then reshare. Okay. The option is there at. Upper Stop side. Sharing. Yes. Ah, yes. Now again, right. start sharing. Yes. Uh, in the slide, so. 
Is it visible? No. No. no uh, you didn't uh, uh, reshare. Is it now visible? No, one no, you second. have to share it. Oh, one second, one second. If you have done sharing, then it will share. Start. I have okay. One then second. I have to share my screen, no? Uh -huh. uh, now yes. you share uh, after making a full screen. Yes. Mm. Is it full visible now? Full but screen is not the coming. Slides. We can see all the slides. We now slideshow. Uh, press on the slideshow. Is it okay? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, now it's fine. <laughs> so, uh, how can I make this uh, small? Uh, this I will minimize it. Okay. So, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. I am thankful to uh, Nagpur OBG Society. I'm audible? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. So I yes. thank to OPG Society Nagpur and Government Medical College faculties got here. Special thanks to Dr. Pragati, Madam. Before starting the my topic, this is what we are. We are the multitaskers. We have to manage the patient with all the knowledge of medicine, surgery, OBG, ultrasound, anatomy, and all these things. For that, before managing a RH negative pregnancy, an obstetrician should be well answered about few questions. That's why my presentation is a case-based questionnaire to solve all your problems. So basic thing, the AB blood doping system is two types, ABO and RH. ABO, everyone knows AB, AB and O antigen and RH system is C, C, D, E and G. The RH antigen is located, uh, my upper part of the screen is visible. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can see it. You can listen to me? Yes, yes, we can see it now. We can so, see your screen. We can uh, uh, just, this is very good to watch it. No problem. So the RH antigen is located on the short arm of chromosome number one. There are six genes responsible for production of RH antigen, three on each chromosome designated as C, C, D, I, or E. When the father is, uh, we all have a very nice discussion regarding every details of the RS disease. Just I am going to the brief which will be pertaining to my ultrasound monitoring. So if the father is RH positive and homozygous and mother is negative, there is every possibility that all children will be positive. And there is when the father is heterozygous, there is 50% chance of being RS negative. So am I... I don't know why my screens are not visible in the upper part. Uh, so when the RH negative mother has a RH positive fetus, I'm not getting the, sorry. How can I make the screen, these things small? Uh, don't madam, think. you have to go to the view option. View? View option at the top. And view option, may you have to minimize, you have to make it 50% or something. View where it is? A view is at the top of your screen. So I have to... Wait, you go to the view option. Top of more mein hai? Uh, I don't know. I cannot. Or madam, you can send your slides to the tech team and they can run it for you. No, the problem is that um, mine are all videos. I cannot. Okay. So again, let me... View option. Achha, view view okay. option so, madam uh, uh, there is one other option you can duplicate uh, uh, one second oh, duplicate, duplicate your screen side. there will be one option to duplicate screen one second it is there or not it is uh, not there because i cannot read my slides why you cannot read your slides so sometimes I, the upper I part of the, the upper part is yeah. covered by the all the faces and all these things. Yeah, you have to make gallery on the right side, madam. Madam, there is. In uh, the... You can uh, you can choose your gallery. Uh, there is view option uh, on the right hand side, right hand okay. upper right hand side view option I is there. View... The gallery again, again I have to share. No, no. Uh, yeah, you uh, need to share because your screen is not visible now. Yeah. Okay. Now so you I... are visible. Now uh, do one thing. Uh, uh, full screen the screen. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, your slide full screen. Oh. Make it full screen. Oh, no, no. Otherwise, you do one thing. You can share your slides to. Don't Mr. don't Ruchi. close it. Don't close it. Don't close I'm it. I'm not closing it. Okay, I I will. I'm not closing it. Share your slides to Ruchir. He will no, present no. the slides for no, you. There is some uh, videos, madam. That's why she. Some is problem is there. Yeah. Can you see now? I'm not able to see the top of my screens. So. Okay. And for that, there is a, a right hand side. There will be a view button. Yes. Go to their view. View button. Hide no. Uh, hide. Uh, hide thumbnail video. Yeah. Hide thumbnail video. Still also so you I... will not able to see anybody else. No, I'm not able to see the top top part of my screen. Okay, it is all right. I will just read it. Well, so once, uh, again, one second, madam. One, 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 one minute, please. Uh, side by uh, side speaker. Choose side by side speaker. In view, there is a side by side speaker. More. Not on PPT, on uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom link. Jumping more side by side speaker, side by side speaker, thumbnail, active speaker video, and one is thumbnail, the other is so grid view. Side by side speaker, choose that. Side by side speaker is not there. I don't know how to do okay. okay. Standard. Uh, I used to keep always the top, but I don't know what happened this time. So non, kya karu fir? Uh -huh. What happened? No, you can share your slides to Mr. I, I cannot. There are videos. That is the main problem. Okay, you, okay. So, okay, I am just going to read it. Should I make it small screen or something like this? Yeah, you can do it like. Huh? In small screen, uh, uh, what do you do, madam? Please uh, go to the go to this. Uh, go to your presentation. Go to yeah, your presentation, madam. I will. I will go to my presentation. Okay. Okay. Then uh, choose uh, this uh, uh, the button uh, the slideshow button. Not do that, but the yeah. left le uh, rightest part there is there, na? Uh, rightest button in that please choose uh, that right button the right uh, right 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 not escape this not... back back escape 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 then that uh, right now it is a note uh, note sequence go uh, right of slideshow right normal then right no no right 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 that that only this one one right right madam right this one not right zoom not there. zoom you are uh, sorry left left uh, leftist right. part. sorry right my, my pardon, pardon left 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 left, left. left. in uh yes that that yes and that uh, uh, uh and uh, there is one uh one uh, uh, uh there in add-ins there is a one arrow near add-ins near near Add-ins in uh, in upper part. Add-ins, okay. Uh, no, no. Uh, side in that right side there is one arrow. Escape button. Escape button. Uh, that uh, yes, this arrow. Arrow. Yeah. Put that. This arrow. Yeah. Collapse. Press it. Then. And then uh one second there is uh uh the zoom is now you can increase to up, up to seventy percent. Zoom. This one. Zoom, zoom. Two. Zoom two. means zoom means uh, zoom of this uh, PPT. That uh, PPT. so I will go through only the PPT mode. That slide so will not be. That's what you are saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, make it uh, bigger. The uh, so everybody oh 70, 70, around seventy. No, the yeah. Even... This is uh, this will be readable. Seventy around seventy. It will but, be readable. Uh, Okay, should I go to presenter's view then? I don't no, know. No, no, this this will be okay. Okay. 
it is so visible I, everyone is able to uh, see yeah yeah even 70 around 70 not more than 70 okay is it okay, okay. this is visible okay. so should i go now yeah okay, okay everything is fine uh, yeah can you see everything now yeah, i i can see now yeah then, then go ahead no problem. Will play or not. Uh, so when the uh, everyone knows that uh, when there is sensitization of the rh negative women with rh positive fetus there is production, production of iso antibodies and subsequently the, there will be hemolysis so if the what happens then that sensitization can occur at any time antipartum and during any of the procedure, as Madam has already told, external cephalic person, amniocentesis, cordocentesis, or any of the procedure, and during intrapartum. So the risk of severity of sensitization increases in each pregnancy. Without any prophylaxis, the risk is 16%. Whereas if you take adequate time RH and TD, the prophylaxis, the risk is decreasing to the 0.1%. So the most Dangerous complication is the fetal anemia, which subsequently lead to hepatosplenomegaly, ascites, edema, pleural effusion, and pericardial effusion, ultimately hydrospitalis. And then the sequence continue, and there will be heart failure and fetal demise. What the ultrasound has the role in managing RH negative pregnancy? Ultrasound, first, as in all other pregnancies, it should be, it is the earliest it should be done to know the correct gestational age, which is very, very important. All the obstetricians should know how to give the correct gestational age because we often get the report from the ultrasonologist or the fetal, uh, not the fetal medicine, uh, ultrasound reports, so many EDDs. So the patient usually get confused and our MOM value depend on the gestational age of the uh, fetus. So very important to know the correct gestational age. Next, next is as in as usual in other pregnancy, first trimester scan, which includes aneuploidy screening, second trimester anomaly scan, and fetal echo is usually required in RS negative pregnancy. Fetal cardiac function to know any problem in the heart uh, as a result of there is high drops or not. And recently it is being added that fetal HQ. And next, the most important is ultrasound has a very, very, very important role in detection of fetal anemia which is again, I repeat, it is the worst complication and the mode of treatment of fetal anemia, which, which could be an emergency management that is ultrasided, ultrasound guided, photosynthesis and intrauterine transfusion. So now I'm going to my case. She is a lady of Gravida 6, para 2 with three abortions. R is negative, come to me at 13 weeks. She is a known diabetic. History of IUFD, listen carefully, there is history of IUFD at 34 weeks due to high drops. Taken one dose of NTD in the third pregnancy. So what is your line of action? As it is already discussed, the husband blood group ICT with titer. So if the ICT is found to be negative, then it's okay. We are happy. Repeat all the param ICT at 26 and 32 weeks. And if it is multi, repeat it monthly from 24 weeks onward here is the change what you have discussed i think this is the correct one if the ict is found to be positive serial estimation monthly when there is uh, ict tater is suddenly increasing it is significant so now the patient is ict positive one in 32 should we give antipartum prophylaxis no women who are ict negative only should be given entity that you have already known and the first dose is 300 microgram at 26 to 28 weeks and second is 26 to 32 weeks. Women again women who are ICT positive already sensitized should not be given for successful immunoprophylaxis of anti DIGG should be given as soon as possible and but always within 72 hours not give if the patient is not taken within 72 hours within 9 to 10 days one can give these are all the obstetrician you must be knowing just i am saying for the so with this what more is suggested you all, do all the investigation of the first trimester recently it has been added that nipt for rs negative is already introduced medgenome is doing it of course the cost is more so you can advise this also
Another thing is the PIH is more common in RS negative pregnancy. Uterine artery PI is a must. Nowadays, it is a must in all first trimester screening. So that you should do. Next, what is our mainstay of management? We know that C is RS positive and it is sensitized. ICT is positive 1 in 32. She has a bad obstetric history. Already lost the baby. Gravida 5. With all these puzzles, what is our next line of management? Fetal MCA Doppler peak systolic velocity monitoring is the standard standalone test for diagnosis and monitoring fetal anemia. So here the key role of the obstetrician to take the MCA Doppler in a right way. So what you have to do, you must be taking the BPD, take the BPD plane, go below, see the wings of spinard, then put color, then zoom it, then put color, put the color box as small as possible to get the more better color flow. Then identify the circle of willis. This is the circle of willis. You identify the circle of willis, visualize the entire length of MCA and enlarge the area of MCA so that it, it occupies 50% or more than the screen. These zooming is very, very important. Zooming and color flow, uh, then you put the color. This is very, very important. And the other thing is that superimpose the sample volume on the MCA 2 millimeter after the origin of the internal carotid artery. And the ultrasound beam should be as parallel to the line of insulation. Suppose you are our ultrasound wave is coming through this direction and our B and flow is ultrasound blood flow is in this direction and our uh, insulation should be parallel to this. So this is very very important because any color flow uptake the science is that there is cosine of the theta. When the cosine of theta is zero then it is one. When it is 90, it will be 0. So your insulation angle should be 0 at least within 30 degree. And take the peak systolic volume and measurement is taken in three, taken for three times. Now, again, I repeat, accurate assessment is very important because even if I took the three readings, it will differ. So you take minimum three readings and take. you can consider which one is the best. I don't think the video will run. Is running okay so this is the this is that you just this identify the branch and put the cursor as i have told what happened to the next slide Oof. Now, the middle cerebral artery is a proven method of choice. It has 95% confidence level. Positive likelihood ratio is 8.45. Negative is 0 0.02. And obtained at weekly basis gives us 98% accurate prediction of fetal anemia. There is a thumb rule that you can remember. The value of MCA PSB should not be double of the GA. Gestational, suppose the gestational age is 30 weeks, the MCA PSB should be within 60. That is a thumb rule, but the charts are available and you can put that on your chart. But while doing without any chart available or anything, because the obstetrician are busy people and whenever just have a rough calculation in mentally that it is more than 60. So either I will be wrong in measurement or it is actually the baby is anemic. Let me measure for three times and put it on the chart. And the PSB is calculated in the multiple of medians that you everyone know. So the risk of anemia is highest in fetuses with pre-transfusion peak systolic velocity of 1.5 times the median or higher. The fetal anemia starts at the antibody level exceeds 15, that is 1 in 1 to 8. Our critical value is 1 in 32, but nowadays uh, peak systolic value is to be considered a better choice than the titer. So, another when there is already a sensitized mother with an anemic fetus that doctor uh, who is presented has already told, that is serial MCA PSP around 16 weeks onward. One another most important the obstetrician should know the past obstetric history is the predominant indicator of current pregnancy possible intervention and outcome. When there is a suspicious of or there is a death or IUFD or anything in previous pregnancy, then 
six weeks before the last mishap, you should be watchful. This one is very, very important for all the obstetricians. So previously affected pregnancy frequently follow up weekly for MCA PSB. Fetal transfusion can be offered as early as 16 weeks. So the case I have presented, she came to me at 13 weeks. I did everything. And 18 weeks, look, the MCA PSB is 1.15 mm. The value I put on the perinatology.com and it was found to be 1.15. I'm happy. ICT was same. So again, patient came to me at 27 weeks. Seven weeks, the PSB, uh, MCA PSB is 1.4 mm. Considering the previous history, so we have started, intra, we have advised for intrauterine blood transfusion. Intrauterine blood transfusion was suggested. So we should know what is fetal intrauterine transfusion. The indications are main fetal anemia. Causes could be all these. So we are considering maternal isomination of RS negative mother with the positive fetus. Parvovirus can also cause the fetal anemia, TTTS, TAPS. And this one is important. I have gone through one case in my series. The trisomy 21 with transient abnormal myelopoiesis said chromosomal abnormality. The baby came to me with uh, high drops. And I did, I advised for amniocentesis. And when I sent, I was it was found to be trisomy 21. They deferred transfusion and they, they terminated the pregnancy. And these are the metabolic condition where also we need fetal anemia. And what you have told, mirror syndrome, that is alpha-0 thalassemia can cause also mirror syndrome. And... It mimics the um, RH iso immunization cases. So why to give the blood, trans uh, blood transfusion? It will overcome the crisis. It will avert fetal cardiovascular decompensation or deterioration due to anemia. This is important because if the question was asked, if you got get a hydrops, what to do? Hydrops, you can transfuse the baby. You can leave save the baby. So again, intrauterine transfusion, O negative irradiated leukocyte, leukocyte depleted, double packed blood cell, hematocrit of the donor should be as close as to 80 and so that the volume of blood to be uh, transfused will be minimum. Procedure you know under local anesthesia and site int intraumbilical, intrahepatic and intraperitoneal. We can mix these two also. So the, we are usually using intraumbilical uh, and when the baby is very small, you can go to intraperitoneal method also. So this is a video that I have done the transfusion. You look, this is the needle at 29 weeks. Are you able to see the needle is going and this is the method. So you have to go transplacentally at the cord, um, cord end site of the placenta and it transfuse it and you see the mm, blood running through it. Are you able to see? Yes. Now, procedure you must be knowing that is to, we use 22 gauze spinal needle. I use Cook's needle. And sample of fetal blood should be first taken to know the present hematocrit, complete blood count, blood grouping, and RS typing. And the calculation is like this. And our aim to achieve a hematocrit level of 40 to 45% at the end of transfusion. Final sample of the blood is taken to check the final hematocrit. This will help time, help us for the next time transfusion. So what are the risks of intrauterine transfusion? Preterm labor, PROM, fetal distress, cord accidents, chorioamniotitis, and formation of new red cell antibodies, graft versus host reaction. These are the value when first transfusion is done, decline, then the decline will be 0.4, whereas in the third transfusion, it is 0.2 gram per day. So keep the hematocrit value more than 25%. Here it is an important thing. Subsequent transfusion, depending on MCA, PSB, axon line is not 1.5 mm, rather it is 1.3 mm. Instead of 1.5 mm, you should be more alert. The After transfusion, don't think that the baby's MCA PSB is not 1.5. Let me sit quietly. No. Then the, your monitoring alert line should be 1.32 mm. Around 36 to 37 weeks, some, some studies they have advocated phenobarbital and 
beyond 34 weeks usually transfusion is deferred it is better to deliver the baby so here in my case she came at 30 weeks after transfusion transfusion was given on 22nd december this is a real original case and post transfusion it was like this 1.61 mom 30 weeks so after 21 days, this was the picture. So it was one point again in 30 percent turn up at 31 week deferred on that day. It was 1.5 mom and uh, 1.5 to 1.6. Then considering the previous history, I have advised again for the IUT, but the patient deferred because this facility is not readily available in our place. So decision of cesarean was done with this sequence. Considering intrauterine IUFD at 34 weeks, LACS was done. And this is the healthy baby, which is he is now four years, I think, four years old. Case two. That was a case without complication, only there is anemia. And because we are alert, we are managing the case and carefully, we could able to give the mother and healthy baby at even at 34 weeks, uh, 32 weeks, because the NI setup, NICU is good. So we could save the baby. But this is a case. I don't think videos will run. So this is a case. Gravida 3, para 2, 29 weeks. Previous 2 IUFD at 32 weeks. RS negative. Partner is positive. Not taken any anti, uh, NTD. ICT positive. Titer is 1 in 64. Baby presented with generalized edema. SITs. Pericardial effusion. And this is the. I don't think the video will run. Are you able to see the amount of pericardial effusion here? This is the amount of pericardial effusion. This is ascites. Again, see how much pericardial effusion it is. And all the normal cardiac anatomy, ventricular arterial coordination is normal and the heart is beating regularly and there is associated hepatomegaly. With all these three things, Presence of fluid in two or more spaces is considered as hydrospitalis because this is a case of non-immune type of is designated as immune hydrospitalis. Then, and this is the hepatomegaly. There are measures how to measure uh, stamp it as hepatomegaly. These are the the liver right lobe should extend beyond the inferior pole of right kidney. This is the by that we are measuring. Uh, whether there is actually hepatomegaly or not. And uh, this patient, MCA PSP is 1.71 MOM and C is 29 weeks. IUT is advised given twice with steroids. She was delivered at 34 weeks. So you must be knowing this is hydrops and abnormal accumulation of serous fluid in at least two of the following with, with or without placentomegaly. Then and the skin thickening should be more than 5, 5 mm and pericardial fluid should be more than 3 mm. And last case, my last my case, what I have shown you, it was 5.6 mm. And uh, there may or may not be polyhydramnios. NSRK is best reserved for diffuse skin thickening without separation. So hydrops, you know, again, immune and non-immune. Due to advent of the NTD, the immune hydro hydrops is gradually decreasing in incidence and non-human becoming more common and with all this this is the management protocol you can get it from the net first do the ultrasound then if it is rs negative no further investigation rs positive do the you can do the genetic of the father if these homozygous it would be more alert if the and it found to be positive then here uh, positive then follow up every two weekly after tw up to after 20 weeks with ICT and MCAPSB and any suggesti suggestive of severe fetal anemia by ultrasound MCAPSB more than 1.5 mm increase in ICT titer more than four uh, four folds then do fetal blood sampling and fetal blood transfusion and if this is found to be negative follow up at 26 weeks with ICT and MCA PSP, and again at 29 weeks, again at 
32 weeks and give a TD one at 24 week to 26 and the other is 32. If the if, you're, if the hematocrit is less than, then if less than 35 weeks prematurity, give transfusion. If more than 35 weeks, give steroid and deliver the baby. So my take home message for RS negative pregnancy, say no to immune hydrospitalis, universal anti-D prophylaxis to RS negative mother, timely referral intrauterine blood transfusion to the fetus if needed because hydropic fetus has 40% survival whereas non-hydropic fetuses are 85% survival. It is preventable. MCA PSB is the standalone test to predict fetal anemia. Goal is to stop alumination, main step, many step air from developing eye drops and ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We can do it. This is the healthy baby you see. Uh, the baby is delivered. How happy she is. This you can give to the mother and together we can win the... This is the, my final slide. Timely diagnosis and referral, proper management, genetic knowledge, eager to learn. Open your mind always to learn something. Specifically, the postgraduate students, you have presented very nicely your case. I am very, very happy that uh, you have gone thoroughly to the subject. It is a challenge. RS negative pregnancy with RS positive fetus is a challenge, but definitely there is a solution. We can achieve it. Thanks. Thanks, Akit. Thank Hello? I'm sorry, my video. I don't know how my, why my full screen is not visible. No, madam, it was a very, very great, after, even after the technical glitch, you managed to keep your calm and composure. Uh, if it uh, if it were, was me, you know, I would have got all flustered. Kya karna hai, kya karna hai. But you were very calm and composed and ultimately you got... Hey, even I used to present class. everywhere because I am the president <laughs> of uh, Society of Fetal Medicine here. Na? So I used to present, but I know why my... Up, the upper part the that was visible so i could not My, but you did it very nicely even though i so don't know because I'm, there. yes because yeah, you I'm, know you I'm, get uh, so much scared if nothing is visible there but you managed it so nice yes. you were am i i was audible yes yes, yes sure my very screens nice. were visible yes, yes. everything yes. was fantastic the only thing is your slides were not, uh, not full screen. They were not slideshow, but they were but in the slide. But uh, we normal could see slide. everything. We could see everything. Uh, it, should be, it would be better if the slides were more. <laughs> no, madam, no the problem. slides were very nice. Slides were very nice. I, since I, I am learning fetal medicine now, and, and, and I'm going, uh, going uh, submitting my images to FMF UK and all that. So uh, I'm also, uh, yeah. I am a fellow from uh, NHS <laughs> Medical College, uh, Ahmedabad and Prasant Acharya, sir. Yes, madam, because I am an ART person, fetal medicine, I have to take out extra time for that. It requires a lot of learning. Like yeah, of I, I, the first thing I'm going to master is genetics. And genetics. So I think anatomy. I started reading anatomy in my fellowship. First time I started reading anatomy. It is so difficult to remember all these things. However, I'm very, very thankful because you have chosen me to share something. I don't know whether I could have given some message or not. But uh, as it is a PG. Uh, course, so I thought it should be in a questionnaire method and case based. So I began. Pragati, ma'am, are you there? Oh, sorry. We welcome Dr. Pragati, ma'am, uh, Secretary of Energy Society, for a vote of thanks. I think she has given vote of thanks. Okay. So, so, just sum up. Yeah. She must have left. No problem, but it was wonderful discussion. Thank you. This year, you were awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. I have two messages to give to postgraduate Sushma Madam with your permission. Yes, sure. Something which we did not do uh, in our post-graduation is exposure to, uh, not I'm not saying very high-end ultrasound machines, but at least every basic machine also has a Doppler nowadays. So every postgraduate should be taught besides basic biometry and amniotic fluid calculation they should be allowed to, to do uterine artery dopplers, MCA doppler, umbilical artery doppler, calculate the ratios, know how to use the perinatology uh, chart. Uh, so many things are free on the internet. You don't need fancy, you know, uh, paid uh, your uh, purchased uh, apps. So, and it is so easy also. 
easy yes, also. Ma'am. And so first know... step is difficult. Then second step is easy. First step is to start. Yes, ma'am. And second thing is they should know how to report because reporting is something even I am having difficulty sometimes. Even at this stage of my career, sometimes when I report, I feel is my report adequate? Is my report missing something? Then whenever a fetal medicine specialist sends a report, I read very carefully because every report I learn something. So you are very right, madam. Learning never stops. Learning never stops. And if you are inquisitive enough to learn, there is nothing which you cannot learn. So thank you, Sushma ma'am. And thank you, dear Pragati, for giving this opportunity. And uh, thank you, Jyoti ma'am, for Jyotsna ma'am, for giving me this opportunity to listen to you. You listen to your wonderful talk. And very soon, we'll be inviting you in Bhopal Obsgani Society to deliver the same. So thank okay, you. Thank you all, I will make thank my you all speakers, all yeah. chairpersons, and the uh, presenter, Dr. Vivek, and the Corona Remedies for uh, giving the constant, very good suggestion and the very good platform for all of us. Thank you very much. And the, all the PG students also. Just thank I, you, just. Thank yeah, you, please, please. And just for the trial, just I have now changed my just Shanta Kumari President Fagsi. Is it visible or pura? No. Nahin? Is it visible now? No. No. Then I have to do something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, then I okay. So should we leave? Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining with us, ma'am. Uh, the meeting is concluded. Yeah. All of us can leave.